Now look here, my good man, we've been more than reasonable. You know that you'll be able to launch your Vega rockets out of our facility for far less money and also much bigger payloads to the orbits you want to get. You us, English pig dog. I'm Go from Scotland. Go boil your buttons, you so-called civard. You and your silly little eh, rockets. Now, just a bloody moment. You keep acting like this, so unprofessional and everything, then we're just gonna have to... How you English say, one more time, uh, I unplug my nose at you, you sons of a window dresser. So you thought you could out-clever us French folk with your knees bent running around and dancing behavior? Ah, with my private parts at your empties, you cheesy lot of second-hand electric donkey bottom batters. Now this is your last chance. I've been more than reasonable. Either you start listening to what I have to say or at least you you a little bit more polite huh? or we'll just... Uh, you love you say. Huh? Dear God, what's happening? Run away! Run away! Run away! <laughs> Now, of course, I'm not going to say that there is anything accurate about that whole thing. And, of course, it was shamelessly lifted from a team of very talented English comedians from a long, long time ago. But um, there are certain accuracies about it. The fact of the matter is every interaction I've had with Ariane Spa since I've come over here kind of goes towards the arrogant side. Well, not just a little bit. Um, they were having an event of some kind, uh, you know, food out for everybody, but it was out in the middle of the convention floor. Everything seemed to be kind of, you know, open invitation. Walked up there and uh, they had their bouncers saying, uh, you, you, are you on the guest list, etc., etc. And I said, are the media invited to uh, participate in this? No, they are not. Okay. So anyway, it was just kind of the general attitude. Not only I got out of them, but just about everybody else. And indeed, um, Saxivore did approach them with an opportunity to launch Vegas out of their facility and they, they didn't get a very friendly response. So really, this kind of personifies what Ariane Spas represents, the old boys network of Europe. And for all this time that I've been over here, I've been really kind of giving the, the image of somebody who's just really, um, I just admire, you know, what Europe has been able to accomplish on such small budgets, etc. But that doesn't mean that everything is idyllic here as far as space flight is concerned. Do they have all the answers? Because really, when it comes down to it, Europe is less committed to space flight even today than the United States is with NASA. And not only that, Europe is just as guilty as far as pointless waste and ineptitude and running over budget, over schedule, etc. They just pretty much do it with one company, Ariane Spas. The Ariane 6 is now long overdue, at least two years. It'll probably be at least three years overdue by the time they actually launch the thing, assuming it gets off the ground in 2023. And not only is it woefully um late, it's also way the hell over budget. We're talking about a project that's running about 4 billion euros and counting right now. And if you compare that to the Vulcan Centaur, which isn't exactly an inexpensive project, but very similar in terms of its capabilities, in terms of its fairing size, payload, just about everything really about Vulcan Centaur is identical to Ariane 6 in terms of capabilities. And yet, 
Europe has spent four times as much money developing this damn thing, and it still hasn't gotten off the ground, and it's unlikely to get off the ground before Vulcan Centaur does, in spite of all the problems they've had with Blue Origin. And here's the real kicker. In order to remain competitive with SpaceX, Ariane Spas has needed some additional assistance in order to get their prices down. That assistance coming in the form of subsidies, 100 million euros a year that the European taxpayers are having to shell out just so Ariane Spas can offer halfway competitive prices to their customers. And there's no sign of that slow going down any time in the near future. I'm not even really going to talk that much about Susie. That came out recently. You know, Ariane Spas is very proud of it, etc. The reusable upper stage and something that will be you know, configured into use with the Ariane 6. As slow as Ariane Spas does everything, I don't foresee that that is actually going to be operational until the end of the decade. Indeed, even they admit that. And by that time, it's no longer going to be viable. It's no longer going to be relevant because Starship will almost certainly be fully functional by then. And with a complete reusability that Starship has, this reusable upper stage, the Suzy, is really not very impressive and most probably will not be very competitive if and when it finally comes out. And not only that, it's also going to cost a hell of a lot to develop. Develop. So as a result, this one company, this one space flight or launch provider out of Europe has been essentially monopolizing all of the money that Europe spends on space flight. The amount of money going out to other providers, the new emerging guys like RFA, Skyrora, and others is pathetic small compared to the amount of money that Ariane Spas gets, and they just keep getting more. As I say, they're kind of the Boeing of Europe, except even worse, really, because at least in the United States, NASA has seen the potential that SpaceX has. They've seen how impressive everything they've been doing is, and so they invest money in them, and so does the U.S. Space Force. Whereas on this side of the pond, really the vast majority of the money is still going to this one company and for all the typical reasons. Because Ariane Spas and Ariane 6 is providing jobs to just about every major country in the European Union, with the exception of the United Kingdom, of course, because they recently broke away from the EU. But other than that, they're offering lots of jobs to lots of different countries, therefore getting big investments for projects that never get completed on time. Does that sound familiar? Well, it should. It's exactly like SLS. Maybe not as expensive as SLS. We're talking 4 billion euros as opposed to 20 billion dollars. But the principle is the same. And the matter gets even worse when you consider how little money European governments are investing in spaceflight right now when they should be investing a lot more. For example, in order to support all of their new initiatives, the French government recently announced that they're going to be increasing their spending, a massive increase, quote unquote, to a figure of 9 billion euros over the course of the next three years, or about 3 billion euros a year. Now, that may sound like a lot for a relatively small country, but it really isn't. The United States spends eight times as much money on NASA and the the United States economy is only about six times as big as the French economy, which means per capita, even with this increase, France is still not spending as much money on space as the United States is. But it gets even worse when you move across the channel to the UK. 
And of course, you've heard me praise the United Kingdom a number of times for what they've accomplished on a relatively small budget, but they're not doing that out of a sense of duty or anything like that. They're doing it because they have no damn choice. The United Kingdom government spends less than a billion pounds a year on space, with about half a billion pounds going to the UK Space Agency. A pathetic amount of money given the size of their economy, and yet there are over 45,000 people employed in the UK space sector in spite of this small amount of money invested. That's about one-eighth as many people as are employed in space-related agencies and projects in the United States off of a budget one-twenty-fifth the size of the amount of money that the U.S. spends on space. What does that mean? Well, it means that dollar for dollar or pound for pound, the United Kingdom gets more jobs and more job creation out of what they spend on space than the United States does, about twice as much. Which means, given the fact that the United Kingdom is in a state of economic crisis right now, about the smartest thing Liz Truss could do right now, especially given how unpopular she is at the moment, would be to invest heavily in aerospace. I mean, obviously this is creating lots of jobs in this country already, and it could escalate tremendously if if the UK were to, say, spend as much money as the French are at the moment. It is very difficult to understand, incomprehensible actually, that the UK is not investing a hell of a lot more in space at the moment, given how much success Spaceport Cornwall and Saxabort have had on virtually no funding and almost all of it private. But here's the greatest travesty of all, the budget of the European Space Agency. You would think with the entire might of the European Union behind it that ESA would have a very substantial budget, especially given all of the ambitious projects they're working on. The total budget for ESA is 6.5 billion euros. 6 point five billion euros or roughly 25 percent of what nasa gets that is absolutely pathetic especially when you consider that the european economy is roughly 70 percent of the size of the united states economy and currently the united kingdom still contributes to esa so what does this translate into in terms of astronauts well it's kind of hard to say there are only seven European astronauts active right now. Seven, as opposed to the total amount for NASA, which currently is about 43. 43 active astronauts versus seven. So for a young European kid dreaming of going to space, what's your best alternative? Move to the US and get U.S. citizenship and try for that lottery as opposed to the almost impossible lottery in the European Union. It, once again, is unacceptable, and I really don't see any European space enthusiast disagreeing with me here. And in general, Europe does amazing things with the small amount of money that they get allocated. If you talk about, for example, the ESA service module for the Orion space craft. The amount of money we've spent on Orion is definitely in the billions of dollars, whereas ESA developed a completely new service module from scratch and built six of them for six future Artemis missions on half a billion euros. That's right, half a billion euros for half a dozen service modules, which by the way is no easy task. We're talking about the propulsion, life support, everything else that Orion is going to need in order to be functional and to carry out lengthy lunar missions. And they did it on half a billion euros. By the way, this was a trick carried out by Airbus, a company which I have a great deal of respect for, and yet, strangely enough, Ariane Spas is an offshoot from Airbus. Apparently, they didn't get the best of their talent. And allow me to get in one more round of Ariane Spas 
bashing because I'll tell you, they have a lot of things to criticize, but the biggest of these things was their decision to compete with SpaceX and everybody else by using Russian Soyuz rockets simply because the Russians could deploy satellites for a lot less than Ariane Spas themselves could do. Not a whole lot different than Blue Origin, really. How do you get to orbit for cheap if you're Ariane Spas? By not using Ariane Spas. But this, of course, backfired on Ariane Spas recently due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And this is something they should have seen coming a long time ago. In 2014, Putin did his old land grab in Crimea and elsewhere, and it should have been obvious that Russia was going to be an unreliable partner in the future, but Ariane's boss continued to doggedly do business with them, launching more Soyuz rockets than they launched of their own rockets. It's utterly ridiculous, and as I said, it backfired not only on them, but also on their most important customer, OneWeb. And to make this whole situation even more disgusting, the European taxpayer footed a lot of the bill. Yes, that's right. The European taxpayer paid for a good chunk of these Soyuz launches, meaning, of course, that the European taxpayer contributed significantly to the success of Roscosmos and Putin for many years. This is something that isn't, of course, the fault of the European taxpayer, but rather the fault of Ariane Spas. So many failures in the history of this company, and yet they're still getting the lion's share of the money. This absolutely needs to stop. There are much, much better alternatives in terms of launch providers emerging right now in Europe. They deserve a lot more investment, and spaceflight in general deserves a hell of a lot more investment from European governments everywhere. Nobody's spending enough money, obviously, given the paltry amount of money that ESA has at their disposal. So, please like, Please subscribe. Also check the description for various ways to support my content so I can continue making journeys like this and bringing you unique content from Europe and elsewhere. And as always, stay angry about space.